It's a beautiful day to be alive. And I'm glad to be here today. You're welcome to this beautiful time in the presence of the Lord. I'm glad for the privilege to be alive. And I'm glad to be able to share with you the word of the Lord, the revelations that have been revealed to me. I can call it my own flavor to this earth as ordained by God. You're welcome. So I'm starting a series and it is titled Much More Than This. You, you are much more than this. Oh yes, you're doing well. Your career is thriving. Your family is doing fantastically well. Oh, you are wealthy. And of course you are healthy. You know, third John too, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and that you be in health even as your soul prospers. You are enjoying that. Beautiful. I'm happy. However, I'm here to let you know that there is much more to you than this. Don't just relax and say, okay, I've gotten it all. You know, it's easier when you're still looking for one thing or the other, you're on your toes and you're moving and you're moving. It's easy. But you know, when you get to a point where you are comfortable, that is where the danger of being complacent comes in. And I've been asked to let you know that there's so much more to you than this. No matter what level you are, no matter what you have achieved, no matter what you have attained, there is so much more to you than where you presently are. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, uh, verse 18, the Bible says that the path of the righteous is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. So there's so much more. <laughs> there's so much more. So much more. And today I'm, I'm addressing identity, your identity. Uh, there's so much more to you. At, I'm treating that from the point of your identity. And of course, this is for believers, those who have come to accept the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior and have become a part of God's family. If you haven't done that, you can do that right away. There isn't much to do. All you have to do is accept the gift of salvation in Christ Jesus. He paid the price. He gave his life. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All you have to do is believe that Jesus died for your sins. He rose on the third day and you have been justified. And you just come and accept that gift of justification, that gift of salvation through Christ Jesus. That's all you have to do. And then you are part of the family. Say, Lord, I'm here today. I, I, I know it's time for me to accept this. I've been hearing about this. Or maybe you left, you came and you left. Come back into the, into the family. Come back into the family of God. God's arms are wide open. He loves you so much, unconditionally so. It doesn't matter what you've done or where you've been, you know, been there, done that. You're welcome back. God loves you. And he has enough room for you. So for you who is just coming into the family, just say this short prayer after me. Father, I thank you for today. I'm convinced in my heart that I should just come to you as she has just told me. I come to you, O oh Lord. Accept me into the family. I accept the gift of salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Thank you for the gift of access. I receive that gift. I come into the family. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. That's it. You have joined the family and you are most welcome. And then we can go on and look at this together. And if you just come, you have just come into the family of God now, please feel free to get in touch with us. We would like to be a part of your growth journey so that you can enjoy so much that God 
has in store for his children. Amen. So you are much more than this. And today, like I said, I'm addressing this issue from the point of identity. And I have a quote. Um, Until you really know who you are, you cannot truly be all you are. As I was studying and preparing for this, this dawned on me and I wrote it down. I'll give it to you again. Until you really know who you are, you cannot truly be all you are. There's so much more to you than this. Okay, so let me ask this question. How do you introduce yourself? Somebody meets you for the first time and they're like, oh, hello, can I meet you? Oh, hello, who are you? What do you say? Some of you begin to say, oh, I'm Mr. Williams. Oh, I am, you know, this. I am, depending on where you are, maybe if it's in, 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 the, in the place of work, oh, I'm the engineer. Oh, oh, I'm a teacher, you know, I, I am an artist, you know, you identify yourself by what you do, by your name, by where you came from, you know, oh, I'm a husband, oh, I'm the husband, oh, I'm the wife, oh, I'm the daughter, you know, depending on the relationship, you, you, you know, that could be different ways of identifying or introducing yourself, and that's which um, has to do with who you are to people, what you do, where you are from, and all that kind of thing. And yes, those are very real. You are very correct. However, for us as believers, as God's children, all those forms of identification, they are secondary. We have a primary means of identification, and this has to do with our origin, where we came from and where we are going back to. So your identity primarily has to do with your origin, where you came from and where you're going back to. And the secondary identification is every other thing that I've mentioned, you know, by relationship, by association, by birth, by nationality, you know, by profession and all that. Okay, so, and there's this other part that people identify you with. This, it is still secondary. People identify you with your situation, with your, uh, they label you with your circumstances. You say the woman with the issue of blood, blind Bartimaeus, uh, Lazarus that was dead for four days. And they say, oh, he's a, he's, he's a widower. Or oh, they say, oh, she's a single mom. Oh, you know, all those labels, yes. It's also a form of identification. But it's also secondary. And at times they matter. At times they don't really matter. And I want to say to you, if you have been labeled as anything, and you know they're calling you all whatnots, or they are using your past to judge you, I want to implore you, you let the past be in the past. Just keep moving forward. Say to yourself, there is much more to me than that. And I'm not looking back, I'm moving forward. Okay, I was saying, forgetting things that are behind me. And I'm moving, moving forward, moving forward toward the prize. Hallelujah. Okay, so identity by origin, which is your primary identity, is what I want to dwell on right now. And I'll take it one after the other. So who are you? A child of God? one that believes in Christ Jesus, you have come to God and you are part of the family. Who are you? One, you are a unique creation made in the image of God. Let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. Let them have dominion. That's who you are. Primarily, you are God's creature. And you're not an animal, you're not a tree, you're not a body of water. You are human, a human being, and you are created in the likeness and the image of the creator. That puts you in a class that is beyond and above every other class of creature. 
There is no other creature that was created in God's image. That is why the Bible says that when you mock the poor, you are mocking his maker. Because we are made in the image of God. Hallelujah. That should excite any human being. I am in the image of the creator. Okay. And then, if you understand that, I'm saying to you, truly from the depth of my heart, if you really understand that simple statement that you are made in the image of God, you will never look down on yourself again. You remember those people? They said we were like grasshoppers in their eyes and so were we in our eyes. Hello, how dare they? <laughs> how dare they say that? How dare you look down on yourself? You made in the image and the likeness of God? If you truly spend time to meditate on that, you will never look down on yourself again. And if anyone ever looks down on you, you have to let them know that, oh, it shows that you don't know me. I know who I am. All right. Okay. And then the number two thing that you need to note is that Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 14 and 15 talks about God being our father. Talks about God being the one after whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So you belong to a family. You belong to a family that, does, that is not even limited to this earth. You have people in heaven who are part of this family. And God is the father, is the head of our family. And you belong to that family. That's your primary identity. I am a member of the family of God. God is my father. I mean, we need to take time, take the time to sit and meditate on this word so that we don't just speak those words. We actually live those words. We don't want to be just hearers of the words, but we want to be doers of the word. You are a member of the family of God. God of whom the old family in heaven and earth is named. Okay. And then Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says that you are God's workmanship. You are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has ordained that you will walk in them. You are God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece the way you are. If anybody should be feeling like, oh, what's wrong? What's... It shouldn't be you. It shouldn't be you. You are God's masterpiece. You are God's underwork. And when God creates, whatever God has created is good. Your height, your weight, your complexion, where you were born, where you live, where you are, it's just good. Everything that God made is good. Even if something is no, not making that good to appear right now, don't forget that God is still able to make all things to work together for good. So it is good. You must get to a point where you are able to identify yourself as God has identified you. And this said to us, Ephesians 2.10, you are my handwork, my handwork, my masterpiece. Hallelujah. And then it's getting better. John chapter 10 and verse 35 says that you are the one unto whom the word of God has come. Hmm. Jesus speaking, he said, if you call them gods, unto whom the word of God has come. God saw you. And then he sent his word to you. You are listening to me right now. The word of God has come to you. It shows how important you are. We are about 8 billion in the world. And God sent his word through this beautiful woman. Yes, I know I'm beautiful because God made me. And he has sent it to you. If it has come to your timeline, if it has come to you, you are on YouTube or you, any, any platform at all and you came across this is because you are that important you need to hear god has singled you out his word has come to you you are that unique 
You're not lost in the crowd. God knows you by name. He knows you by location. He knows you by position. He knows you. He knows you. He knows the number of hair on your head. How amazing is that? So you, that the word of God has come to you. So unique. Hallelujah. It's getting better still. Just come with me. And then in John 20, 21, it says that we are God's representatives here on earth. That's who you are. Jesus said, as God has sent him, so he's sending you. And God sent him here for a purpose. And that's the same thing that you have been sent here to do as a believer. So you are an ambassador for God. Imagine that. You are a representative of God. So they're looking for God and say, hello, I'm here. <laughs> Somebody who goes to any country, for example, an, an ambassador um, from, the, from the United States of America to Namibia is there. If there's anything that needs to be done in Namibia, you know, with America, they don't need to go all the way to America to go and see the, 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 the president or come hold a meeting. The ambassador is there. He is the representative of the country. So somebody needs anything, you are here. You are that important. You are God's representative. You are his ambassador on earth here. That's who you are. That's your identity. And it's getting better still. Okay. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 11, and 1 John, chapter 4, verse 4, it says that you are carrier of God's spirit. You are carrying the spirit of God, the spirit that was there at creation. You are carrying him inside of you, you like this, a child of God. You are carrying the spirit of God. You are carrying the power of God. That's why he said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amazing. You are God carrier. So somebody sees you and they're like, oh, there's no one there. Oh, that means they're not seeing anything. They're not seeing anything. Because you, as you are, you are carrying the presence of God. You are carrying the spirit of God. You are carrying the power of God. And then Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 says you are the salt of the earth. Ooh. The salt of the earth. Have you ever tried to cook a pot of stew and then you realize that you've run out of salt and then you try to bring up bring all the seasonings that you have and you're trying to put everything there. Have you noticed that there's nothing that can replace salt? You are irreplaceable. You are, oh my goodness, I'm excited. I feel like jumping up. I am the salt of the earth. That's your identity. You are the salt of the earth. The one who created you, the owner of heaven and earth said so. These are things that you need to meditate on. Feed yourself with the truth. Know who you are. Know who God has said you are. Like I started, like, like I began with that quote, until you really know who you are, you cannot truly be who you are. You have a flavor. There's no one like you. <laughs> and then Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, the next verse, it says, you are the light of the world. A city upon a hill that cannot be hidden. You are an edifice. God's own edifice. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's your primary identity. It doesn't matter what your, the secondary identity is saying. It doesn't matter what this, the, the second, the B secondary, that is what the world labels you as, as. It doesn't matter what the world labels you as. It doesn't matter. What matters is the primary identity that you have. Whether you live in a country and then, you know, you look like you're different from them. Hello. You are uniquely different. You are the light 
of the world. Glory to God. Glory, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And then Psalm 82 verse 6 says, you are a God. You are a God. He said, I've said unto you, all of you, you are gods. You are children of the Most High. As a child of God, you are a God. This is not pride. This is rightly and correctly estimating yourself. That is who God calls you. That is your identity. You are a God. And somebody is saying, I'm a God, but I am not having dominion in some areas of my life and some areas of my life. I know. But you know, when you see a lion, you recognize that this is a lion, right? A lion is a lion. A hungry lion is a lion. A wounded lion is a lion. A sleeping lion is a lion. I'm going somewhere. A lion is a lion. A God is a God. Your primary assignment in God is settled. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the situation that you find yourself in right now. It does not make you any less a God than you are. It doesn't make you any less a lion. Please don't forget this. If you forget anything that I've said to you today, don't forget that a lion is a lion. A hungry lion is still a lion. A wounded lion is still a lion. A sick lion is still a lion. A hungry lion is still a lion. Refuse to let secondary, you know, identification, either that, that is, that's thrown at you or that you found yourself in or that you got yourself into, never let that define who you are. Your primary identification as a child of God is by your origin, by what you've been endowed with by God, by the fact that you are an ambassador here. You are here on purpose and at the right time, you will go back to where you came from. So when we say we are in this world, we are not of this world. You have to let those things sink in. And you need to live according to the realities of what God has said about you. Okay, so knowing all this, uh, what manner of man or woman ought you to be? Knowing your primary identification, knowing that your identity primarily is in God and by God, and for God and through God, then what manner of man, what manner of woman, what manner of young man or young woman, boy or girl, ought you to be in the way you view life, in the way you act, in the way you speak, in the way you carry yourself? What manner of man ought you to be? And don't forget, it's not about your situation. A hungry lion is still a lion. A wounded lion is still a lion. So, so, so what? You're broke now? Does it make you any less God as God has made you? And it needs to reflect in the way you process whatever it is that you're going through. Never, never lose sight of who you truly, truly are. Okay, so I'm going to mention two or three things as I begin to bring this to a close. In your conversation, speak right. Speak from the point of who you are. Speak from the point of your primary identity, no matter what the situation is. The Bible says in the book of um, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, that, you should, that we should speak as the oracle of God. Speak 
declaring the counsel of God. You have the oracle of God. The oracle of God has been committed into your hands. You speak right. Speak as the oracle of God, no matter what. Because if you don't, if you refuse to speak as the oracle of God at any point in time, it's either you are lying or you are calling God a liar. Either way, it's an insult. For you, who is the child of God, who is of the family of God, it's an insult for you to lie. Because sin does not have dominion over us. So when because you're wounded or because things are not looking good or because you're still waiting for a manifestation, you now begin to say contrary things. You begin to say things that are not according to the word of God. You lie. And it's an insult for you to lie, you know, as a child of God. The devil is a liar and the father of all lies. We know who we are. And then if you also are not saying what God is saying for time, if you're not speaking as the oracle of God, you are calling God a liar. You are saying that what you are seeing is more real than what God is saying. And which is also, of course, a very big insult. And where we come from, no, we don't insult people. Mm -mm. So you speak, speak as God's oracle. Speak the divine mandate of God. Speak the will of God in the face of contrary manifestations. Speak not just because you, you ought to speak as God's oracle. Speak because you have a consciousness, a confidence, great assurance of what you are saying. God is not a liar. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. God is not a liar. Glory to God. And then you act right. Yes, you can. You have been given all that it takes to be able to act right. You act right. He said, he, he, he said, he said that um, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Then you act right. You are able to do that. Yes, you can. You have been empowered to live right. You have been given the ability to live right. You know, he made us to, uh, he made us righteous. He says to us, he said, he has made us righteousness through Christ Jesus. We have been made unto God his righteousness through Christ Jesus. So we have been made right. We have been given the ability, the divine ability to live right. So if you find yourself not being able to live right, all you need to do is build your muscles. And how do you do this? I'm going to show you three things that you should do. <laughs> if you find yourself not being able to act right, and you know that your primary identity is in God, is of God, is by God, is through God, and you find yourself not being able to do these things, do these three things. One, begin to feed right. Start eating the word. Begin to feed, right? You've seen all these athletes? They begin to, they put them on a diet so that they can get a particular, get, get, get to a particular weight. You put yourself on a diet of the word of God. Because everything that you need is in the word. Every nutrient that you need to build your muscles, they are in the word. Get in the word. Begin a word diet. And then begin to build up your faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. You see people that want to, they want to um, go for a boxing or a wrestling competition, then they, they are building their muscles. They're exercising. They're exercising. They're exercising. Jude 120. But you, beloved, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You're building up. You're building up. You're building up. Because you have all it takes. We have everything in seed form. We have all the raw materials. People. So feed right. 
then begin to exercise. And then one more thing, one more thing, one more thing, discipline yourself. I mean, if you need to go and fast, go on a fast so that you can be disciplined, self-discipline, self-control. You see these people, they will make sure that they don't exceed the maybe a particular weight, um, whatever the diet, you know, the measurement that's been given, they do it. So if you find yourself not being able to set control and set discipline fast, that's a good reason to go into a fast. Keep your body, tell your body, put your body in control. We take charge of your body. Because we have all it takes. We have been given all it takes because of our origin, because of our primary identification. Hallelujah. So feed, exercise, and discipline yourself. Get in the word, pray in the spirit, and fast. You will find yourself being able to align and appropriate who you really are. In Christ Jesus. It's amazing. And if you, you, you don't know about praying in the spirit or you, you, you long to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, please reach out. That's why we're here. We want you empowered, having sent to ensure that these things are done. So to everyone I'm sent to, one, even if it's just one percent. You know, I was, I, I, I was meditating some days back and I was just looking at, you know, the things that God has asked me to do and how, you know, it's been done and just doing an evaluation. And, and I was saying, okay, even if it's 10 over 100 that I'm able to reach, that's okay. I'm just going to do my beat, you know, and keep doing my best and all that. And then I heard God say, even if it is for the 1%. And I was like, okay, wow. Wow, 1%. Remember that, that story of the, the shepherd who left the 99 and ran after, went after the lost one. And when he came back, he threw a party. I found my lost sheep. You know, and you don't even know how precious that one over, you know, one over 100 is until it is you. I know I saw that poster sometime last year or two years ago. That it is easy, it is, you might, you might not understand why the shepherd, I'm just paraphrasing, you might not understand why the shepherd is leaving the 99 behind and going on to look for and rescue the one until that one is you. And you know, I've come to understand and realize like never before, every single one of us is important to God. One person. The Bible says that everyone rejoices over every sinner that, that repents. So you are very important to God. And that's why he has made all these you know, resources available so that you can be the best that he has made you and you know, um, programmed, designed you to be. Okay. All right, so in pursuit of your purpose, in your relationships, in whatever you're doing, whatever it is, always know that your primary identification, that your primary identification is what is most important. Who you are is who God has said you are. And don't forget, a lion is a lion. Whether the lion is wounded, whether the lion is sleeping, whether the lion is angry or hungry or whatever, a lion is a lion. You are who God says you are. No matter what the situation around you is, and what the Lord will have you do is take charge and be the best that you can be. Don't forget to make use of all the resources that's available to your disposal. Okay? All right, all right. I'm honored to have been able to bring you the word of God today. And I'm looking forward to the next episode um, where I'll still be taking the, the second episode of You Are Much More Than This series. Be on the lookout for that. And until then, I'll see you again. Remain blessed. Love you. Bye.